Hi, my name's Keith Cooper from Northlight Images and in this short video I'm going to show something about making a printer profile for this, the Epson ET8550. Now the paper I'm going to be using is a metallic gloss, uh, it's an Olmec branded one. It's a 260 GSM paper. Uh, this is A3 size. Um, I've loaded a sheet in the back of here and I've set the paper size to A3 plus and the paper type to premium glossy. Now the 8550 has a relatively limited range of media settings. So that means almost certainly if you're going to make your own uh, profiles you will need to find out which the best profile is sort of the best media setting is for making your profile. Now as a general starting point uh, premium luster does for a lot of papers and premium glossy if they're glossier papers. This is a metallic paper so it has an interesting sheen to it and it is a paper that uh, almost certainly you won't find a profile for for this. Now some companies, uh, certainly I know several here in the UK, if you buy a pack of paper they'll send you a target that you print and you send it back to them and they'll make you a custom profile. That's great. What about if you want to make your own profiles? Well the kit I normally use and I've shown in, in another video is getting on for 5,000 quids worth of uh, kit so it's not really a practical proposition for many people. What I'm going to have a quick look at here is using the i1 studio or as it's going to be known uh, in future going the CC studio. Uh, there's been a change so x products are now uh, under the Calibrite brand but uh, this is an x i1 studio. It'd be the same device if you were to go out and buy one. It's an i1 device that uh, it's USB connected um, and I'll show the how you do the measurements in a bit. has this uh, strap here for holding it. Uh, sand filled strap seems to make a useful fitting there. Um, I've looked at this uh, several times over the last few years since it first came out. This used to be known as the Colour Monkey and uh, you can still get the original Color Monkey uh, is still supported by the current software uh, so there's no problem there if you get an old one but what I would say this is the sort of thing that um, I think on your own maybe you'd not make enough profiles to justify it but if you went sort of part of paying for it with a camera club or something like that yeah five or six of you who want to make uh, printer profiles uh, it becomes quite a reasonable cost certainly much more so than the kit that I use which is really sort of professional level kit that uh, you would not normally expect to use but for this all I need to do is print out a target and the custom profile with a printer like this that I'm going to make is the key to getting good print performance now in the review I've done of this printer I've mentioned quite a few papers that I've profiled. Now I've profiled those using the i1 ISIS which is the, the big scanning spectrophotometer that I have and that's really easy that makes um, excellent quality profiles but as I said a bit over the top for what most people would do. But anyway I've put this sheet here inside the it loaded it up into the 8550 I've set paper size A3 plus and I've set paper type to premium glossy and that's as I should be fairly good for this. If you're unsure then you can do some experiments with test images. That's a little advanced working out stuff like that and is going to get you through quite a bit of paper. Inks use is not such a problem on this because this is a tank based printer. Now this particular printer has both pigment black and dye black on it. Now for the premium glossy setting it is just the dye inks that are being used. If you use the Velvet Fine Art setting you're getting a mixture of pigment and dye based blacks being used for the blacks of the print and that makes a difference. Um, it's one of the reasons why I say with this printer the results you get from it 
can be excellent, but they do depend on having good profiles and picking the right paper. But anyway, with all that preamble to it, I just need to print the uh, target. Um, I'll then let that dry, I'll measure it. I then need, with this particular system, to print a second target, let that dry, measure it, and then generate the profile. But anyway, the software, and uh, I'm running it on my Mac here, and uh, I've set paper size, I've set the uh, type uh, for, to the paper, and I've just called it metallic gloss. Now I'm using the data save workflow on this, uh, which is explained in, in the help at the side, but it allows me to actually do several bits of profiling at the same time. The original software had a major problem in that you could only do one paper at a time which meant that if you had to leave something uh, overnight to dry, effectively you had to leave the software running overnight and catch up with it the next day. That's not the case anymore, but uh, all I want to do here is just print this. Now, I could save this image uh, as a TIFF file and print it elsewhere. I could use uh, any application I like for printing targets, but you need to print it with all color management turned off, and that's the important bit. So if I go to print here, I've then got the settings that I need for printing it. I've uh, made a preset here for printing just so I can go back to it simply. And I've set the medium type at uh, Epson Premium Glossy. I'm printing at high quality for the profiling here and the size is A3+. So this is going to print via the top slot where I've loaded it and uh, everything's set there and I just print the target. Now the software is working out printing and it's going to send it to here. And this is the first stage of making your profile, your first print. Now I'm using an A3 plus sheet because I have a box of A3 plus sheets. Um, the actual target will fit on an A4 sheet, but I don't have any A4. Well, there we are. Um, the printer driver told me this image would be at one end of the paper. Uh, it isn't. Uh, looks like I will be using a second sheet of paper after all. But anyway, this is the first part, the profiling target. I've got to leave this to dry. Um, even with a paper like this, I would suggest leaving it for at least half an hour or so to make sure it's properly dry before you do any measurements. But the next bit I have to do is actually measure these uh, patches here and then the software will generate a second set of patches to refine the measured data and then it'll do the profile. So uh, we'll leave that there and uh, time passes. Well, I've left the print to dry for a while and I have it here. Um, what I would say if you're measuring uh, prints like this on a surface like this, which has got obvious color to it, I use a sheet of cardboard and an old creased sheet of A3 paper. Uh, this is a watercolor paper right? with no optical brighteners in it. So it's just a sheet. So it gives a white background that I can do measurements on. Uh, because for papers, if they're too thin, uh, the light that is being used to measure can go through the paper and reflect off the surface underneath. So if you were to put the print directly on a desk or surface like this and measure it, you're also partly taking a measurement of the color of the wood here, which is not really a feature I want to incorporate into my printer profiles. So I have the, uh, here, I have the device. Um, I need to set it to uh, calibrate it, which is just the yeah, bit twists here. I would say that I've got a full review um, not a video, but uh, full reviews of this. And Calibrite themselves have, or X-Rite as was, have videos on their uh, website that shows the process of making the measurements in a lot more detail. As I say, I don't use this very often, so this is a, as much a test of how easy it is to use for me to come back to it as it is an example of exactly how you should do it. Um, there's a distinct chance I might make some mistakes in running through this, but whatever, uh, we'll see what happens. So I'm just going to look at the computer here, and uh, I need to first calibrate the device it has an internal target which it measures, it checks, it uses that for working out whether everything's set up correctly. 
and uh, it has succeeded. I now move the wheel here back round to measure, uh, you can see the light coming out at the bottom there, uh, to measure this and I'm going to measure the chart. Uh, you can use this for monitor profiling as well, it does the whole lot. One thing I would say that I discovered a while ago, um, this is not the original USB lead that came with the device. I found that a little stiff um, and this is a, a longer one, a longer, slightly more flexible USB lead. It needs to be a reasonable quality one, but um, it has a small connector on here, but I just happen to find this one easier to use. It's a general purpose lead. So what I have to do is just look at the software and it guides you through the steps you need. The device shines a light out, measures the light reflected, measures and calculates what the colour is. Now, you need to scan this evenly in stripes. Now, by turning it at a slight angle like this, I can get a smoother movement. It will tell you whether you've made any mistakes. So we'll uh, try the first line first. I'll press the button and just go like that. And it's measured okay. And I now go through and measure the rest of the chart. Just hold it down there. No, I got that wrong. I pressed and released the button. You know, stuff like this takes practice. Um, this is why I use automated chart reading machinery. Um, if you have to do this for one or two profiles, that's okay. If you want to do it for 20 profiles, it's a right pain. So we hold that down and go like that. That's read correctly. That's the next one. Let's read that one. That one. You'll notice the last one only has two patches on it here. So we can do that and we'll do that. Invalid measurement. Well, there we go. Let's try again. So press that down, hold, and go across, and we've got the measurements. And that's it, that's the measurements completed. That's the first set. I now need to process this, print out another sheet, and then we'll make a profile. Now the software hasn't enough information to make a profile just from these few patches here. But it knows from having, when the software was developed, having tested many thousands of different papers and sets of measurements, it knows what a profile should look like for this printer, or at least broadly what a profile. So we'll use this uh, particular uh, information here, read through the device, create a second set of refining patches. Now the refining patches are what I print out the second time, measure those, so we take the original set, the refinement patches, and then we'll make the profile. I've now got the refinement set of patches, and this I'll print out to make a second sheet. Here comes the second sheet of patches. There's a second sheet. We compare it with the first set of patches, and you see here we've got a wide range of colours, a much narrower range of colours here. Uh, these are areas which the software has decided more data is needed. So it's now a matter of just leaving this one to dry as well, and I can measure this the same as I measured the last one. It's the second target. Uh, once again on my sheet of cardboard and uh, white paper. I say make sure the paper underneath is not got any optical brightness or anything because you don't want that affecting your paper as well. Uh, so I shall measure this the same way I measured the last one. Um, the software is still set up. I've been able to just leave this running and make the profile in one go apart from just waiting for the paper to dry. If you want to do several, then look at the workflow that allows you to save the images and save your your profiling workflow, because then you can do several at a time. So you can do a load of prints of different papers, 
do the first measurements, then go back to do the second prints, leave those to dry, do the measurements. You haven't got to do them sequentially, you can do them in parallel, which makes a big difference. Uh, but uh, anyway, so I've got these patches here. So once again, I'm just going to measure them. There we go, it's measured that okay. There's no pressure on it, you just gently slide it along. Um, one of the other reasons you want to make sure that your print is properly dry, because you don't want to rub anything off while you're sliding across doing the measurements. But the measurements are really quite simple. Press the button, slide, done. There we go. That's all the measurements carried out. It's uh, quite a simple process. And now I just go through making the actual profile. So I've got everything measured there. And we go to it. I would always suggest giving your profiles a meaningful name. Um, this includes the date inside. It tells you the printer. It's fair enough to use this. The default for this is a version four profile. If you know you need version two profiles, then use that. Um, I don't normally have any problems with any of the systems I use using version four profiles. It's the default. We will save that and it will create the profile. Now, one of the things to remember is that uh, the profiles will be put into the default position on the machine you're using to create them. So you may need to move them elsewhere if you do printing from another machine. And also, if you're going to print using these, make sure that any application that you're using is restarted before using a new profile, because things like Photoshop only checks profiles when it's fired up. So uh, if uh, I had Pro Photoshop running here, made this profile, and then tried to use it, it wouldn't be there, because pro pro it wouldn't be seen um, until I'd restarted Photoshop. But it just takes uh, a minute or two to make the profile, and then it's ready, and the whole process is done. Right, well, I'm now printing my standard test image that I use for evaluating profiles. Uh, I'm printing it from in Photoshop. In fact, I'm using an old version of Photoshop CS6 here. Doesn't really matter. Uh, prints just fine. I've selected the profile that I've just made, and now we'll get it to print. Here comes the print. Um, it's not terribly fast as the 8550 at the high quality setting, which is what I've got here. So uh, it's going to take a few more minutes for the print to come out. Well, the print's looking good. Um, so I've done another video looking at using this particular test image to evaluate profiles and the sort of things I've been looking at to see how good the profile is. But there don't appear to be any obvious problems, which is, yeah, I, I wouldn't expect any. This is a relatively well-behaved paper. Um, it doesn't have any unusual characteristics. Yeah, it does have an interesting sort of purple sheen to it in its reflection, but that's because it's a metallic paper. Um, it uh, has minimal optical brightness in it, as far as I recall, uh, so that doesn't cause a problem. I know some profiling systems you have to be careful when with papers with optical brightness. Um, the i1 Studio, CC Studio, handles it fairly well. Um, obviously, you're not going to be using this for making professional level quality uh, profiles that you'd sell, um, but uh, it's good enough. It's at times like this you realise that uh, this printer is not a speedy printer. It may save you on ink, it's very good quality, but you do have to wait if you want something printing at best quality. Um, ah, but I would say that it's worth it. Um, looking at this print, uh, for example, I'm going to say all of these panels in this have various reasons. Uh, the sky colour nice and even, there's no unusual changes in the blue sky here, the greens look okay, uh, the people look, the shadow detail, even the black and whites look relatively neutral. So um, there you have it, uh, one print made on a paper that is doing freshly profiled using the i1 Studio and uh, works very well.
And as I say, if you're looking for something to get share amongst a number of people, ideal solution for you. But uh, anyway, thanks very much. I hope that's a bit of interest. Uh, if you've got any questions, drop me a line or ask a question on the, on the video and uh, happy to uh, reply on that. But thank you.